Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Um, you could be anywhere in the world today. And uh, we've, we've, John's learned that we've got listeners all over the world. We'll talk about it later. That'll be, uh, that'll be in the Pat Our, Bat sec- Pat Our Back section. Uh, I've already screwed up, so... We know that this is going to be a good show. Uh, Robbie Raz here with you as always in Cigar Federation. Uh, we've got our uh, conscious Canadian sitting in for Logan today. This is like the polar opposite of attitude. You're like Bizarro Logan. Or the yeah, anti-Logan, if you will. I'm not going to sit here and put my grumpy face on because I've got a cigar, I've got a whiskey, and we're talking about whiskey and cigars tonight. And, I mean, if I'm put on a grumpy face, something is seriously, seriously wrong with my mental state. That's that's a true story. How's everything going up there in Canada? Good, man. It's uh, it's actually kind of a nice day. We had uh, way hotter than expected temperatures. We're, uh, we hit 30 degrees for all the metric lovers out there and uh, high 80s for... <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs> for those of you uh, listening and not watching the show, John just got attacked by his Canadian flag. I don't know. I don't know if that's because I was switching <laughs> over into uh, Fahrenheit there. The Canadian flag decided to take a piece out of me. Mm-hmm. But... That's just how we roll here live on CigarFederation.com. But, uh, no, it was, uh, it's a nice hot day and um, promises to be a pretty hot summer. This keeps up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, out here in, in California, we had some rain earlier in the week, which was odd. Uh, and then today it's, it's 90 degrees again. So the AC is pumping again as we speak. But you guys didn't tune in to find out about the weather. We've got uh, Joe Cusano from Dram Cigars here with us today to talk about everything Dram. Uh, Joe, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, guys. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And yeah. No. I'd like to really thank all our uh, men and women in the armed forces that are out there listening. Thank you very much. We appreciate your service. Yeah, absolutely. They're, um, they are built to do something that I'm not built to do, so, um, so God bless them. Um, so uh, if you guys are familiar with sharing or pairings, that's another show that John and I do uh, here on Cigar Federation. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it. Um, <laughs> we've uh, we've done a show Heck featuring yeah. we've done a show featuring the first three Dram cigars. There are actually four Dram cigars on the market. We'll get into each individual blend, uh, you know, as we get through the show. Uh, we had Joe uh, join us a couple weeks back as we were doing the Dram Three show, and uh, he kind of broke down a little bit about the company and. Uh, you know, a little bit about his, his history in uh, the industry. But you guys are familiar with the show. You know this is kind of our MO. This is how we kind of get started with a new guest. So this is the first time we've had Joe on in uh, on Cigar Chat. So, Joe, give us a little bit of your personal background, how you got involved in the cigar industry, um, and a little bit about Dram, and then we'll go from there. Sure. We started out, my brother and I, with the Kusan brand of cigars. We started Kusano in 1995. And we brought it from basically a small, small local brand to a national brand. We were sold. We sold to Davidoff in approximately 2010, and I stayed with them for a couple of years. And then I left, and I tried to retire for the second time. <laughs> and then I ended up starting CNC Cigars, which is the latest one, which. We came out with the CNC lines of Connecticut Shade, Corojo, and Maduro. Very simple. And one of the questions we always got was, "What should I? What should I? I have when I'm drinking this? Here's what I'm going to have tonight. I don't know what cigar I should pair with it." So we went out and looked, and we ended up developing the Dram line. Dram are cigars that are specifically blended to pair with whiskeys. Dram one. Actually, let's let's save that and talk a little bit more about the the company itself. Yeah, we'll get into the individual blends, uh, you know, as we move forward. But yeah, give us a little bit of background on. Um, I mean, there's there's we've noticed actually. John and I have noticed since uh, since we've started doing sharing our pairings. We've been doing that show for about a year now. Um, we've noticed that a, a lot of cigars have come on the market that are uh, marketed to be blend or to be uh, paired with specific. Beverages, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there was there's the Casada has done um, a few things to pair with beer, and then uh, Drew Estate recently did some stuff to pair with beer. Um, but Dram, I think, John, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the only one that is 
that is blended to be paired specifically with whiskey, right? It's the only one I've yeah, seen. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that that's why it stood out for me is that, you know, it's it's great to pair with beers, but there is there is a few uh, lines out there to pair with beers, and that's great. We love beers. But um, for us, we were pretty excited to take a break from pairing with beers and hop over to pairing with whiskeys because, you know, whiskey's great. And, and, and yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's no other company doing um, cigars specifically to pair with whiskey. So that was, uh, we jumped all over that. Yeah, for sure. And then if you guys know John at all, he's he's definitely got, um, I'm not going to call it a problem with whiskey, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's kind of the guest room is full of bottles of whiskey, basically. <laughs> Yeah, he's got some. What, what are you drinking tonight, by the way? Um, I'm drinking a, a Port Charlotte from Ducati. Uh, it is the Antaramor Isle. Um, it, it's kind of an odd choice, given that it's warm out. You wouldn't really think you'd go with an Isle scotch. But hey, you know what? It's it's my whiskey. I can do whatever I want, and tonight I'm drinking it. So You could even put ice in it if you wanted to. That's right. Slangeva. <laughs> um, I'm going with the uh, Glenlivet uh, Nadura that I picked up on my trip home. It's the Glenlivet Nadura 16-year-old first fill American oak, which John and I have put a pretty good dent. We actually finished off a bottle of uh, Glenlivet Nadura last year at IPCPR. We found a bar that was uh, local to where we were, and we went there kind of every night and, and threw back a few. We did some serious damage there. But I didn't realize that there's like five different Naduras. This is a topic for another another time, but apparently this one's only at Duty Free, which I didn't know, and I couldn't find really any information on it. Um, but it's it's quite tasty. Anyway, so let's get back to, uh, I got us a little off topic, but still kind of tangentially on topic. Uh, let's get back to DRAM. So, um, you know, you were saying a lot of people were talking about pairings. You guys, didn't, you saw kind of an opening in the market, and you guys went for it. We sure need. And one of the big questions folks had is, am I pairing the right cigar with the right whiskey? So we tried to make it easy for them to pair a cigar with a particular flavor profile of whiskey. And what we did is we, you know, we always have a great cigar, but we tried to, to make these blends specifically geared towards the pairing. So the blend isn't what we would have normally made for just as a cigar. We made it so it enhanced that flavor profile of whiskey. And it makes the experience better. The cigar on its own is a great cigar. It's any one of the blends are fantastic, but when you pair them with the appropriate whiskey category, it makes your whiskey better and it makes your cigar better, and it just it's just a great experience overall. Yeah, that was uh, definitely the experience that John and I've had. Like I said, we did, uh, and John, you could probably go into more detail than I can about these because you remember more than I do. But uh, the Dram One show, the first one that we did. And if you guys go to DramCigars.com, it's D-R-A-M Cigars.com. It's, I love the website. It's, very, it's just one single page. It's very simple, but it gives you all the information that you need. There's Cask 1, Cask 2, Cask 3, Cask 4. I'm going to call them Dram 1, Dram 2, because that's what I've been calling them, but they're actually Cask number 1, Cask number 2. And it kind of breaks down the profile that you're going to get in the cigar and the type of whiskey that you should be pairing it with. And there's uh, kind of like a... <laughs> almost like a bar graph of whiskey, if you will, uh, that will kind of break down the different, uh, the different styles. You, know, you get more citrus, woody, spicy, and then smoky. Um, but we've done uh, an individual show for each one. So, again, if you haven't seen them, go to CigarFederation.com and you can check those out. Uh, Dram 1 really stood out to me, cast number one. That cigar, just on its own, and it's a Connecticut wrapper, right? Is it, yes. Yeah, Connecticut, Connecticut wrapper. Yes. Uh, is it Ecuadorian Connecticut? Yes. Okay. And that cigar, just on its own, and if you guys follow me and you know my, my palate a little bit, I do tend to gravitate towards the creamier, sweeter cigars. That cigar is fantastic. It, it is. That is one of the ones I'm most proud of. Yeah, and that's, I mean, in the, the way the market is today uh, for cigars, everybody wants big powerhouses, and I think that's actually dying away a little bit. Um, but to to find a... It's not easy to find a good Connecticut, and there are a few that are coming out, um, you know, in in recent years that have that have been pretty good. That one, I just really, really enjoyed it. And the the recommended pairing that you guys have here on the site is with the the Glen Morangy Original. And that's what I paired it with. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Uh, John, which are the ones that stuck out to you? Um, you know, I I th think I just echo the statement of Joe here that. Um 
I think it, we talked about it on our show is that uh, it's nice to have something that pairs well with a beverage of, of sorts, but you always wonder in the back of your mind, is is the is the cigar itself kind of leaning on the beverage to be a good cigar? Is the cigar going to stand on its own? And what we definitely found because we, yeah, is it a yeah, gimmick, right? Like, are you <clears throat> are you making up for some of the shortfalls of the cigar by pairing it with whatever? Um, now we did reviews of each of the cigar by themselves. We did reviews, obviously, on the show paired with a uh, beverage, and I think what we clearly stated through all you know, the three that we've done is that, as Joe stated, each of these cigars are, are sort of have their own enough character to stand on their own. They don't, they don't need a whiskey. They're fantastic with whiskeys, but they don't need a whiskey. These are cigars you could absolutely pair with something else or just smoke on their own, and they, they mm -hmm. definitely stand on their own. Yeah, ab absolutely. I would agree with that. And I've got – I'm going to jump in real quick with an audience question here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this one's from uh, Jason Myers, and Jason always asks. Jason tends to win almost every week because he always asks yes, really. He, he always asks really good, insightful questions, and we get a lot of the same stuff. You know, how did you get start in the industry? Blah blah blah. Uh, and those are good questions because we want to know that information. But but Jason always does take it a step further. Uh, this is and this is a, this is a question I'm really interested in. Uh, when you were developing the Dram blends, was there a consistent group of whiskeys that you used uh, to test the pairings out? Uh, so, I.e., did you uh, constantly use Glen Morangy or Balvenie uh, to test the blends for Dram Number One, etc.? Yes, we actually we use both of those, Glen Morangy and the Balvenie Twelve, Balvenie Doublewood Twelve. That was sort of like our baseline, and then as we de we developed the blend itself, then we expanded out the selections to different scotches and different whiskeys in that category, just to to see how everything paired together. Then when we did a, a blind test with folks that really didn't know what they were trying it for, but we had them try the cigar and then try a, a whiskey of a list we gave similar to what's on our chart. And you know something I just noticed here? That since I can see myself in my little corner of my screen, I'm <laughs> Italian, as you could probably tell, because if you notice, you see a lot of hand movement <laughs> with me. And I just <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> no, that that means you're excited. Yes. I, yeah, I've uh, I've 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 got a my my family background is Norwegian, and we have listeners in Norway, right, John? That was the other that was yeah. the country. Some list. So shout out to everybody listening in Norway. That's uh, that's my people. My uh, my father's father was born in Norway. I don't know where, but I know he was born there. Um, and my mother's parents are both born in Italy. And so I can always tell, you know, we get together for a big family dinner, which we haven't done in years, and it's kind of a shame. Um, but as dinner goes on, there's more and more and more hand movements. So uh, the more the hands are moving, the more the more you're passionate about what you're talking about. So that was a, that's a good question from Jason, and I think it stands to reason that uh, I mean, if you're working on these blends, obviously you're going to want to find you're going to want that baseline. So okay, it pairs with these, and then you kind of expand out, and that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, now before we get too specific. We started talking about there's four different blends. Why don't you break each one of them down, Dram, cast number one through cast number four, and, uh, you know, wrappers, the strength, that kind of thing. Cast number one is the Connecticut Shade Wrapper. It's mild to mild plus. It's a really, it, it's a very complex, flavorful Connecticut Shade. And it, it's, a, like I say, a fantastic cigar on its own to try. Cast two is a Corojo. It's a little bit more body. It's still right there. Yeah, that's that's what I'm smoking on. Cast three is Habano is a Habano wrapper, a little bit more on the spice and little power end, and cast four is a broadleaf Maduro that has the rich, thick, heavy smoke that you get that nice little broadleaf taste, and it just goes really really well with a stouter, more peaty. Smokier whiskey. Okay, Lafroy. so that, yeah, the Lafroigs and uh, and those. Uh, that's the one. Uh, John is very excited to try that. We haven't uh, we haven't sampled that one yet, but hopefully we'll be doing that pretty soon, and then we'll do another uh, another show. But uh, like I was saying, if you pull up DramCigars.com, you can you can get all that information. It's real. It's real concise. I like the way that it's laid out. And um, I'm smoking the uh, cast number two. Um, medium strength Corojo wrapper, and it's got some nice flavors to it. Like you were saying, it's it's definitely got more body. It's definitely got more strength than the Connecticut. 
Um, and we actually were smoking uh, Corojo wrapper cigars yesterday for our sharing our pairing show, and I, I keep going back to that because it's relevant here. But uh, um, we paired with a, a lot of different things yesterday, but we didn't pair with any scotch. And I went a little bit off the uh, off the reservation with the scotch that I picked. As I was looking at my bar, I didn't really have anything that was in that woody that woody uh, category. Um, so what I, I, I kind of pushed the envelope a little bit with this Nadura, and at first. The uh, the scotch was running over the cigar a little bit, and I expected that. But the the more that uh, that my palate kind of is welcoming in this scotch and welcoming in the cigar, it's it, it, the cigar really is kind of standing up to it. So there's there's definitely a, an area that the cigars want to be in as far as pairing is concerned. But I think you can stretch them out a little bit too. You can. If you notice on the the chart we put out there, there is overlap. And it's a lot of your personal taste, too. That's why we had so many folks try them. Because we had an idea what their palate was like. And to try to put them in, into which whiskey and which cigar, that gave us the range that you see in the chart. Mm -hmm. So a strong smoker, a milder smoker, a milder drinker, a stronger drinker. So we knew we tried to get that and to, to develop where we thought the spread would be the most comfortable. And you're right, you can push the envelope. Any one or two on each side is relatively easy. And it's going to be, it's, it's a personal preference. It's taste. Yeah. So we tried to, to get a, the biggest control group we could to tell us what the, what, where the taste came in. And I'm sure you had a really hard time finding people that would sample these. Yeah, you know, it was tough. I had it to twist my arms. Yeah. I, I, you got to come over, you got to drink some scotch, and you have to smoke some cigars. And yeah. yeah, that was tough. That was yeah. tough. I'm sure it was It was really tough. Um, so uh, this kind of bleeds into a question here um, from uh, from Jose, uh, Man Angel, uh, big, uh, big member of uh, Cigar Federation, uh, very constant on the site. He contributes a lot, and he always asks a lot of good questions. So we appreciate uh, everything that Jose does for the website and the community. Um, so this question kind of bleeds in because he says the bourbon market is is booming now. He says there are any plans to make a dram line geared more towards pairing bourbons. Now you, you guys really do incorporate some bourbons in these yes. uh, yeah. in, in in the spectrum. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, bourbon. Actually, bourbon is probably my favorite of the whiskeys. I love a bourbon. And two and three, I think, are the are the, the best bourbon cigars. You look at uh, the Angel's Envy, I think we even have on our chart. Mm -hmm. And the Rye, also, too, it is very, very good with the three. Oh, Angel's Envy Rye is fantastic. Yeah. Try that with the three. Try that with the three. You'll, you'll really, really like it. And you look at, at, at the bourbon... We tried to use that chart to just give you an idea of what flavor profile there was. We knew we couldn't put every whiskey or every mm -hmm. every blend up there. So we wanted to give you an idea. If you've tried one of the ones that are up there, then you have an idea where that is. And if you have another whiskey which you can fit in somewhere along that chart, that'll help you decide which cigar really goes with it. And bourbons were, were key in that bourbons were actually used in the test also. Yeah, and uh, as, as you mentioned, if uh, you're looking at this chart, um, you've got a couple of bourbons on there. Uh, three, it looks like. Uh, well, there's Angel's Envy. Uh, you've got Bullet, um, which I think is... Uh, One of my favorites, too. Bullet, yeah, they're big in, uh, in this area. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is Bullet... Got some Jack Daniels on there? And Jack Daniels is in here as well. So just to give you an idea, that and those all kind of fall in that spicy, that spicy range, which you're always going to get that spice when you have a bourbon. Um, I uh, I actually I've got, and I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it's uh, Stranahan's uh, whiskey out of uh, Colorado. It's very very good, and it's an interesting flavor profile. And it, to me, it's got some of those Scotch type notes. It's a little bit sweeter, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I really wanted to to drink that on the show and pair it, but I didn't have a Dram 3, and that's the one that I would have paired it with. If I if I would have tried with this Dram 2, it would have run all over it, and it wouldn't that wouldn't have been any good for anybody. But uh, No, so the the, uh, the bourbons definitely do mix in. John, did we do any bourbons when we did the shows? You know, I'm trying to think back, and uh, boy, it must be too much bourbon or whiskey in my diet, because I don't recall, but... Um, I think, I I think we, we, focus were... mainly, we focus mainly on, the, mainly on whiskey. the scotch. Yeah. Scotch whiskey, scotch yeah. Whiskey, yeah. But anyway, sorry, I asked you a question and then I answered it for you. That wasn't very polite. 
No, that was... Well, you know... You're 100% right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so go ahead, John. Jump in with a question here because I've been... Uh, yeah, we, we have a uh, chat room question from Explosive Donut, and uh, Explosive Donut's always good for a couple questions. He actually mentioned that uh, he, he had to catch the show. He was not going to miss the show because he's pretty excited about the idea of pairing whiskeys with uh, cigars. And he wants to know, uh, with so much complexity in both cigars and scotches, uh, do you think there's that having the four different cigars limits the number of optimal pairings you can potentially have? And is, obviously is there room in the future to expand on that? Yes, there is room in the future to expand, and what we're looking at for the first expansion you'll see with the Dram line is we're going to do, going to do a limited edition cask. Nice. Names have been devised yet. It's going to be one size. It's going to be a limited limited run. We got some really really fantastic tobaccos that are not that plentiful. Hmm. So it'll be a real, true, limited edition. Real, true, limited edition where once it's done, it's actually done. That's exciting because that's, that's kind of rare nowadays because the limited editions seem to be everywhere, but they don't seem to be that limited. <laughs> anyway, that's a topic we've talked about a lot. Can you tell? Yeah. That's one of the things we, we want to be sure of here. If we say it's a limited edition, it's going to be really a limited edition because mm -hmm. that, that was one of my pet peeves. Yeah. Well, it's it, it's I mean it's understandable. It's popular in the industry. It's popular everywhere, and I mean it doesn't it expands across uh, industries. It's not just a cigar thing. Um, but you know, to to say something's limited because of its shape, and we're only going to make so many of them, you know, it's still limited. Mm -hmm. It's a bit synthetic, but it's still limited. But to to hear that it's you know you've got a, a finite num a finite amount of tobacco that you're going to put in these blends, and that it's going to be a true limited edition. That's exciting. Yes, we're very excited about it. We're we're working to finalize the blend and the packaging. You probably won't see it out till probably early next year. Mm -hmm. So for uh, for IPCPR this year, were you guys at the show last year? Of course. Yep. How did how did we miss that, John? I have no idea. That's that's on us. We're it's our bad. Obviously, we're not going to miss it this year because uh, we yeah. got a microphone, we got a couple cameras. We intend to hit that booth hard. Yeah, we'll uh, we're definitely gonna we're gonna be all over it and spend some time with you guys. But I, I don't know how we missed you last year. But so for this year, it's really you're going to be co focusing more on these these four core lines because the fourth uh, edition is relatively new, right? Yep, uh, four is actually just starting to, sh to ship. We just we haven't even oh, wow. gotten the samples out to everybody. But uh, they're just coming up. Actually, there's some up on the container that's gonna gonna hit next week, and the that should fill us to be able to ship all four sizes. Hmm. We have Fantastic. been inundated with with dram orders. I, I got to tell you, we actually stopped taking new clients for dram right now until we caught up on production, because what we found was we were getting there was so much reorders before we expected them that it started to eat into to our stock and one of the things we didn't want to do is to be able is to start somebody new when we have a person that's got got it on the shelf now that needs to get another order and we can't supply it yeah. so we, we have had a little bit of a problem keeping up on demand we are working hard to, to fix that so if you if you're in the store and you don't see the full complete one through four line, we are working to, com to to finish that. If you don't see all the sizes, we're working to do that too. I mean, we're trying right now. Okay, which whatever size we have in any, any one of the four blends, that's what we'll send out to try to make sure everybody has at least some of each blend. That's that's a good problem to have, but it's it's it's, it's also it's like ah, I don't want to have this problem. Yes. So no, I I like the idea, and it, to me. And we've talked about this before on the show. Where it's, it, it to me that says a lot about the whatever the com whoever the company is that it, instead of reaching for that dollar, whoever gives it to you first, you're going to make sure that the guys who have w been with you from the beginning, they get what they need to get, and you take care of your core customers before expanding. And I, I mean, I respect that from a business standpoint because um, that's that's got to be hard to do to tell people, not right now. I know that you want the cigar, and I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just want to make sure that we get everybody fulfilled so that when you do come on board, you will always have what you need to have. It's, I right. think it sends the right message. Yeah, and it is because a store makes an investment to bring the product in. Mm -hmm. They invest some time and effort into into marketing it to their customers. So I want to make sure that if they take put that effort in, 
they can be able to reap the rewards of having it there when their customers come back, which they've been doing. Yeah, no, that's I'm surprised at the velocity that this they they were moving. Really surprised. So, how long has Dram been on the market? Dram really, uh, I believe we we shipped the first order in December. Or actually, no, excuse me, it was the week after Thanksgiving. Okay. So, so very new. Yep, very new. Very, very new. Wow, okay. And uh, we, were, we were amazed at the, at the reception it got. We were amazed how many people wanted to jump right on board. We, try, we opened up uh, more than we initially had planned to, more than we had scheduled for production. We ran into an issue also with boxes. Boxes are very difficult right now for us as manufacturers to, to get a good consistent supply of boxes. So that slowed down our production a little bit. But, you know, as a new, new cigar, as a new brand, we can't do any of the normal uh, stop gaps that a company would do if they had a box issue. We opened up a lot of accounts. Uh, they sold through the product that we expected. We gave a, a month or two to sell through the product. They sold it through them in a week. They're <laughs> recovering. And it's a great problem, but yeah. it's a good problem. And we're working really, really hard to do that. Actually, if you notice, my background is a little bit different than it was last time. Mm -hmm. I am actually at the warehouse in Florida right now. Not at last time I was at my house. We were working today to try to get as much dram as we could shipped up on this next container wow. to fulfill some of the, the back orders. We are, what we have on order right now that we haven't filled is, is pretty big, pretty big. And a lot of these are starting to be reorders, which we exhausted everything we had held back, and it's all it's gone, so we have to get as much up as we can. And it's a little bit frustrating today trying to get this done. <laughs> yeah, no, I can understand, especially with uh, with the show on the horizon and everybody's doing trying to do the same thing that you guys are doing. Um, you know, get their their product up. Um, uh, that's that. I imagine that's got to be frustrating. But it's great to hear that that the reception has been so warm. Um, I you know once I I saw these on uh, I saw them online. I can't remember who it was that was reviewing it, and uh, he was nice enough to give me. Um, uh, Renee's contact information over with the uh, Orleans group, and I was able to reach out to Renee, and he's been great to work with. Um, and I was really excited to get my hands on some of these because it fits so well with what the, with what we do. Um, so I, I'm glad to see that it's being uh, being recepted uh, that way in the market. That's great to hear. Um, oh, go ahead. No, and, and as we started to say uh, earlier on, there we saw it as a, a need in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and. It was to try to help people get the experience for themselves. Yeah, and the experience that they were already asking you for. They were asking for it, and yeah. we tried to make it easy for them to pick it. Because of the of the five people that ask you, fifteen don't don't say yeah. a word. So we those guys. We that's why we developed that chart, so they could just sit there, look at it, say, okay, that's what I need, and they're they're happy. Yeah, and that's what we try to do. We try to make everybody happy. Cigars are are great. They're fun. It's a it's an awesome hobby. And to blend the two most enjoyable <laughs> tests together, having a nice whiskey and a cigar, I'll tell you, if we did that at the UN and every place else, it would be a much <laughs> nicer world. We just figured out world peace is wrapped up in uh, in whiskey and cigars. Um, so a, a quick question here, and then I'm going to throw it over to John because, again, I've been talking too much. Uh, this one's from Harley Holmes, and you, we talked about, obviously, these are all um, blended to be paired with whiskeys. Uh, his question is, is why did you guys pick whiskey as opposed to beer or, or wine or coffee or something along those lines? Well, whiskey, try to look at, at going out for an evening. If you go out for an evening... You want to pair. You want to. You want to do a celebratory act, or you want to do a relaxation. The questions we got also was that from the folks, they were normally going out with their friends. They were doing another social activity. 
and they wanted to, they were going to a place where they served whiskey. So whiskey, I think, is the more difficult pairing than some of the others. Just because there's so many, when you look at whiskey folks and cigar folks, they have a lot in common on the way they talk about the whiskey and the way they talk about a cigar, about Absolutely. The flavor and what you, how it makes you feel, your mouth feel. So that was to to, to me the natural connection to put that two together. Yeah. But now that you bring that up, I just got to tell you about something that's on the horizon too. Looking at a uh, another line that's going to come out that's going to be geared towards other types of beverages. Really. Yes. That, Interesting. That will won't be till end of the year. Hmm. Around that. So maybe I don't know, John. What do you think? Something that paired with wine. You call it. What would you call it? You wouldn't call it barrel because that that kind of maybe vintage. You give it a vintage. Oh. There you go. Vintage. Vintage. Vintage series one through four or one yeah. through five. Yeah. Vintage yeah. one would be like a Pinot. Vintage two more of a Cab. Get the Syrah and Merlot yeah. in there. Yeah. You know, it's yep. see, we Which got the, the ideas, port, man. They're port there. is number five. Yeah. Oh, port is a port. I always forget port. Port is good. Port's good. Can't forget port, brother. I always do somehow. Okay, John, you go. I've been talking too much. So, Joe, because we talked a little bit about this, that, um, you know, we were pretty excited to see you guys move into the whiskey space, which is, is really empty right now. There is a lot more. Uh, certainly, we've known over the last year it's been a growing space for competition in the beer uh, pairing level. Are you guys anticipating over the next six, especially with your success, are you anticipating over the next six months, 12 months, to see some pressure from other manufacturers in the whiskey space with pairing? You know, there, there are folks that, that have tried to do this before and they basically tried to to teach people how to pair a whiskey and a cigar together and take it from me trying to do that to most the general population is a very frustrating experience <laughs> so that's why th again that was the whole reason for DRAM was to make it easy it's easy to pick out you know your whiskey you pick the cigar to go with the with the whiskey that you're drinking. That was that was our goal. People always have doubt in what their what their selection is going to be. We try to remove that doubt for them to to give them the best opportunity to make a great pairing for themselves. And it, it they know it as soon as it happens they know it. The cigar and the whiskey when they pair them together, it automatically it clicks. The light goes on. You know, to, to try to explain to somebody how to do it is a very technical uh, process <laughs> that most people lose track of because there's so many factors you have to keep you have to keep in play. Strength, flavor, spice. Where does it all fit? Is there is creamy going to go good with this, or is creamy going to going to make this less attractive for me? Less pleasant, so that was a, that's a lot of things to look for. So that's why we tried to make it simple. The chart, it's really easy, and if there if there are other manufacturers that come out with a cigar for whiskey, I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, imitations is sincerest form of flattery. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, Joe, I've been following you guys, and I know Rob's been following you guys on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you guys have been doing tons and tons of events. So when you're doing these events, are, are you finding that a lot of your time is, is uh, spent during doing a little bit of education with the spirit side of things? Or, like, how are those events playing out for you guys? Because, I mean, from what I can tell on your, uh, on your media, you guys are just balls to the wall in these events. I'll tell you, it's, it's really amazing. It's more about... Explaining the chart and how to how to pick your cigar, and then guys are on their own. They they love the fact that they can now select which whiskey they're going to have and know which cigar they can have with it. It's a lot of times on normal cigar events you get a lot of questions about your blend, about each tobacco. Those questions just aren't materializing. Guys are just saying it, it's the blend. It's, it's come with almost like a single barrel. To or a single malt to a blend. 
they're not they're just accepting the cigar as it is which it's a great cigar but they're not asking all the in-depth questions about the about the cigar construction and the, the individual tobaccos that are in it because it's the it's the flavor itself that's there it's you know it's funny that you say that because I'm looking I'm scrolling through the questions while you're talking about that and normally we get a lot of questions of you know region that the tobacco came from and this particular wrapper and you know your new release has this particular wrapper why did you decide to go with that and that we don't have those questions today it's interesting that you would point that out and it's it seems to be going uh, in the same direction here with the conversation um, I think that's kind of funny uh, but I can imagine I mean you guys are blending these specifically for uh, this particular we don't need to ask why did you pick this wrapper and why did you pick this well you picked it for this particular reason because this is why you wanted to pair it um, question here about the um, the uh, cask number four, and this one's from Charlie. Uh, he says, I'm very excited to try the broadleaf wrapped uh, cask number four. Uh, he says, what made you decide uh, to have this cigar made by uh, E.P. Carrillo? He says, it's a great choice, by the way. One of the things we did with the dram lines is we had an idea of where what flavor profiles we wanted where we wanted to start and as a manufacturer we have a certain style to the cigars that uh, that we make at our own factory it has a certain taste profile a certain quality to it and I didn't want to try to to do something that I know somebody else does really really well <laughs> and to start there made our process a lot a lot easier Ernie makes a great cigar he, does. he has that he has that certain quality to the cigar it was what we were looking for when we did decided on the four and I'll tell you it's I can't wait for you guys to try it I, I don't want to talk too much about it but <laughs> you guys gotta try it I love a, a broadleaf I love a Connecticut shade and I love a broadleaf and the true Connecticut broadleaf has this this really nice thick rich creamy smoke and it 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 really accents the smokiness and the peatiness of the whiskeys in the in the higher category the spice everything everything works together and you'll see when you pair it how well it it, it really does the little bit of natural sweetness you get the 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 flavors that you're going to come out with really complement what's in that spicier peatier whiskey. Okay, no, that's uh, I, I like that question from Charlie because um, <clears throat> that's when I saw that 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 cigar was being made by uh, by Ernie, I was I was excited because I mean he's made a lot of the cigars that I personally enjoy uh, and a lot of the stuff from Crown Heads and things like that that I've really really enjoyed so. Um, to, to see that it's coming out of that factory is exciting, and I know John, you're you're excited about that one too. Heck yeah! I mean, you know, I as a cigar smoker and a whiskey drinker, um, I think if you're if you enjoy it as a whole, you tend not to stick with one type. You're always looking to, to challenge your palate, and I think that you know, nice thing certainly about dram, and the nice thing about whiskeys is that there is such a range that you know, on a day like today. Maybe I would have gone with something like a Glenlivet or a Glenfiddich, something a little bit uh, woody or maybe even sweet. But, uh, you know, you can also go to the other end, which is the, the heavy, salty, briny, peaty end of the spectrum. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of nuances in between those two, uh, those two bookends for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's, absolutely. Sorry, Joe, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Just to try to enhance the overall experience for everyone. That was our, that was our goal. To, to have it easy for them to do, to pick out which cigar should go with which whiskey, and to let them take all the stressors off and let them really focus on just the enjoyment part of it. So to go back to, you know, we didn't get a lot of questions about, you know, specific leaves and specific uh, uh, regions and things like that. Bob Dog jumps in and, and wants to know um, if you guys have, played around with the idea or toyed with the idea of coming out with a San Andreas Maduro wrapper. Oh, yeah. When we did the, when we were working on the Dram 4 blend, we did try a San Andreas, and it didn't give us the flavor we wanted. 
Hmm. And again, you hit the nail right on the head, Ralph. Everything we did in each one of the cigars was specifically to to have it taste the way we wanted to to pair with that whiskey profile. So every selection was was gone under under that guise. Okay. So I could see the San Andreas Maduro has a lot of the characteristics that I feel like would pair really well, maybe more with a bourbon than uh, than with a Scotch whiskey. Um, and I could see that being more of like a, a limited edition because San Andreas is hot, right? And mm -hmm. maybe paired specifically and working specifically with a specific company. Like maybe this one's made specifically to pair with Angel's Envy Rye. I throw that out there because we we already mentioned it, and it's fantastic. If you ever get – I'm not a big rye guy. Uh, I, I don't – that rhymed. Uh, but uh, I don't really rhyme much either. But um, not a big rye drinker. But uh, my wife and I went to this San Francisco Spirits Festival and it's actually coming up again, and we're probably going to go back this year. And it's just, it's uh, this big, I guess it used to be a airplane hangar or something in Fort Mason in San Francisco. And it's a lot of local guys, but it's a lot of national brands, and they're just there tasting. They're pouring, uh, they're pouring different, uh, you know, different versions of, of their particular product. I mean, you have the Glenn Livets and the, the Glenn Fittics and, and those guys, but you've got you know the Angels Envy, and there's a lot of, I found that there's a lot of local uh, companies making gin in this area. Gin is kind of making a big comeback. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big gin guy. I, I mean, I like gin cocktails. I've never really had gin straight, but I'm getting off topic. But I did try that Angel's Envy Rye, and I went back, and it got to the point where it, when the girl saw me walking up, she just poured two and handed them both to me because <laughs> she knew I wanted to come back for more of that. That is fantastic. It's not yeah. cheap, but it's no. fantastic. I tell you, it, it impressed me very, very much. I tried the first one because... The bourbon line was bigger and the rye line was smaller, so I tried the rye and then I, I was I was really not expecting it to be as good as it was. I really wasn't. And I haven't drank rye since right? hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, the, the way that I, 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 again, John, you could probably speak more into this than I can, but it seemed like rye was made out of more out of necessity than... Uh, because of what was available to make uh, to make the beverage, uh, as opposed to you know people really were gravitating toward that flavor profile. But nowadays it seems like everybody's coming out with a rye, and uh, of the ones that I've that I've really sampled, that one's the best. Am I even close, John, at all? Well, I mean, I, you know, rye is uh, is a huge thing in Canada. Um, we have a really large rye industry, and I think you know the average person up here really uses rye more of. Um, of, uh, as a blend, right? They're creating cocktails with rye. They're not necessarily drinking it straight. But like, as you say, Rob, I think that's that's changing a lot. Um, there's a lot of ryes up here that uh, they're, they're going for the more eight-year, even eight-year-plus aged wow. ryes, specifically to be a sipping rye. Uh, so, the mar I mean, we are seeing some, some maturity in the market where um, I think people's tastes are changing a bit and, and maybe going for something a little bit more uh, highfalutin rather than uh, just a straight-up cocktail. The birds are really chirping over there, man. It sounds. It must be a beautiful uh -huh. day. It is gorgeous. Uh, it's it's a nice. It gives a nice ambiance to the conversation. I like hearing the little chirp, chirp, chirp in the background. It makes me feel like, I don't know, Bambi's gonna come running by or something. Right? <laughs> um, I, I tell you what, I'm just happy there's no winter and no wind blowing. So I'll I'll take it all day long. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's see. I know we've got uh, we've got probably about 15 minutes left. So let's see if we can get through some more of these. Uh, these audience questions here. Here's another one from uh, Man Angel. Um, he says, uh, there are a few companies now that are barrel aging their cigars. Is mm -hmm. that something that you guys have considered or looked into? No, we don't want to do anything that's going to impart any aspect of the whiskey itself on the cigar because that would change and and it would gear you more towards one particular whiskey where we want to be able to have the entire breadth of that that flavor profile. Okay. So we don't want to do any kind of infusion, any type of aging inside the whiskey barrels, because it does. I mean, it, you do a barrel age, you actually can take it out when the tobacco is still raw. When you pull it out, you smell the, the whiskey in there. And that's not what, we're, that's not what we want to do, not our, not our goal. That was, you were, that was a very... Finite answer. No. 
<laughs> I thank you for expounding <laughs> upon the no. I appreciate that. But you, but I mean, that was very. You guys have obviously talked about it. That's been a conversation that's come up because yeah. I mean, there are some cigars that have hit the market lately that that uh, they are using a process like that. Well, I, and I find that really interesting. But like you say, it, it does. It's going to make you. It's very specific. And, and you guys, yeah. Good. Yeah, they're good cigars, but it's not what we were looking for for Dram. Dram, we wanted to be able to pair with the breadth of whiskey in a in a flavor profile. That was our goal. That's why, again, the tobaccos we selected, how each one of the tastes, why that Connecticut is so complex. It's got to be complex and subtle, because look at the whiskeys that we're pairing it with. So, that was that was almost probably the most challenging. Yeah, that's uh, and that's a, a perfect way to describe uh, the dram. Uh, dram cast number one is is it's it's complex but it's subtle. It's a very good cigar. Um, and if uh, like I said, if you follow any of my reviews and, and you agree with uh, you know the way that my palate is, we have a similar palate. You should definitely give that one a shot. Now, a question here. This is more of a, a general question. Uh, with the four different cigars available, do you guys have? Um, Maybe at events that you do or anything like that where it's like a sampler pack where they get one of each? We don't do that right now. And again, that's mostly because we are a little behind in production, like I, I was mentioning. As t time goes on, we're going to come out with a sampler, a four-cigar sampler and an eight-cigar sampler. And that's... You'll, you'll, see, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of neat stuff coming out in that range. Because I love a little sampler pack to, to give to a whiskey drinker. It's yeah. a perfect little Christmas gift. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's with, with uh, I know with our community, that's the kind of thing that people want. They want to be able to, if you've got five different, six different blends, give me a way where I can try each one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's easier on the budget. Uh, but it's it's also you know those are the kind of things that you go to events for or you know the things like even even like the show today where the, you know to get you know something like that um, and we've got some giveaways we'll get into those a little bit later but uh, um, I think that yeah that's the kind of thing that just as a consumer that I would love to see and I know that uh, that's the kind of thing that would be a hot item for people especially you know the guys who follow our shows they would really be into something like that that's for sure I love a little a little a sampler that you could put in your pocket oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of samplers, and we're talking about you know the four different lines, and each each line comes in four different sizes, right? Four sizes, yes. Uh, five by fifty, six by fifty-two in the cast one, six by fifty-four in the two, three, and four, seven by fifty, and a six by sixty. Okay. Yeah, John and I were talking. Uh, we were talking offline, and with and this was actually before you even hopped on, Joe. With pairing cigars, and we've gone through some cigars, like we said, that are you know specifically made to be paired with, with a particular beverage. The smaller the cigar, the better for me. I mean, like a like a robusto, petite robusto, a Corona, um, you know, something like that, because a, you know, with, like especially the way John and I were talking, you can go through a lot of whiskey, right? <laughs> when, when you're uh, you know you. You bust out a Churchill, you mean it, man. That's that's you are set for the night. Like, don't, don't bother me. We can talk, but that's it. I'm not moving. I got my bottle and I've got my Churchill and I'm plugged in. I'm ready to go. Well, that the the sizes that we use was a, as a reference to the cigar smokers themselves, because oh, a lot of folks have uh, have a very specific size range that they're comfortable with. Some, like the six by sixty, some guys only like uh, a heavier ring gauge. They're not comfortable with anything else, and but that was another issue we had. We had to make sure that each one of the blends in in each one of the sizes worked right for what we were looking for. That's why the fifty two and fifty four. You're gonna think this is ridiculous, but the the cast one blend in the fifty two just tasted so much better than the fifty four. Don't ask me why. I don't think that's ridiculous at all. <laughs> no, I mean, it, when, when, I mean, and John, I mean, we can talk about that. You know, when you get into ring gauges, some cigars, you try it in, like, there's some cigars that, that I will seek out in a specific size because it's it's a very different experience, you know? I mean, right, I mean, I know you've experienced that, John, same thing. 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, you think about how many factors go into that because you're talking about ratio of uh, of blender to, or uh, binder to filler, of wrapper to filler, and then you you know throw in extra um, hooks in there, like uh, whether it's box pressed or what the uh, Vitola side, like whether it's torpedo or whether it's a straight up robusto, or um, you know, there's so many variables. Um, I say it's. I'm sure it was extremely difficult tweaking each of those variables, but I'm sure it was also fun tweaking each of those variables going through, you know, each each possible uh, option on that. Uh, that it sounded like it would have been a fun experience. Yeah, it was a lot of smoking and drinking. Somebody had to do it, so I bit the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so to kind of steer things in a slightly different direction, got a question here from Shooter, um, and he and Shooter doesn't drink alcohol. Uh, and he says, but he loves coffee. I said, what of, of any of your cigars? Now, obviously, they're all made to be blended with with whiskeys. Uh, but, I mean, you're going to have some guys out there that maybe they want to try your cigars and pair them with some other different things. Have, have you played around with anything or had you know customers come back and say, hey, you know, I smoked the number three and it was great with a Pepsi or something well, like we'd that? Love to, we'd love to hear that. We'd love to hear if anybody pairs with anything other than a whiskey, what they – what their experience was, where they thought of the paired really, really well. And for for the coffee drinker, what kind of coffee? Yeah, it wasn't that specific. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, like, I would say, you know, pick up that Dram, the Dram cast number one, pair that with, like, maybe light roast, medium roast. I wouldn't go to a dark roast. Like, it's going to open my overpower it a little bit. But that would be a really, really nice pairing, you know, maybe uh, just after breakfast. That would be really nice. Actually, that's what I had this morning. I had yeah, there you go. One. <laughs> yeah, and yes. I know uh, I know Shooter pretty well. We spent some time together when we were just down in Nicaragua, uh, and I know that Shooter likes a bigger, bolder cigars. So maybe that number four, maybe with a dark roast coffee, might work for him too. Yeah, dark roast or uh, maybe maybe even like espresso, espresso or something. Yeah, espresso. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would that would probably go well with it with an espresso. Yeah, yeah. So you can uh, absolutely. So just to to kind of branch it out, I mean. These cigars, like you say, they are they are blended specifically for this, but they are there's 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 nothing going on with these cigars. They're not they're not infused. They're not flavored in any way. I mean, they're they're your basic regular cigars, yes. and um, so you could pair them. I mean, look at the blends, and you could see you could pair these with whatever whatever you would normally pair a, a Corojo cigar with. I mean, with the, I'm smoking the, the number two. It's Corojo, and what what did I yesterday was. Uh, it's still alcoholic, but uh, I paired uh, Corojo yesterday with some uh, some Zacapa rum, and I imagine that that pairing would work here as well. Or yeah. you know, a nice root beer. I, I I still I think that there's absolutely no cigar out there that will not pair well with root beer, and I think that might be my mission, John, for the rest of the year <laughs> is to find one that doesn't pair well with find root beer. Find one that doesn't go. Yeah, because yeah. that, that that pairing to me is just it's it's just it's just good. Um, anyway, uh, so that would, I wanted to definitely touch on that because. You don't have to have whiskey with you to enjoy these cigars. Nope, you don't. You don't. And that's why we we had to make the cigar stand on its own and enhance the experience of both the cigar and the whiskey. That was our biggest challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, John, I know we're coming up against it. We got a few minutes left. You got uh, you know a final question from the audience there? Maybe one or two questions. <clears throat> You know, I like that uh, that top question there from Bob Dog. Bob Dog always comes up with some good questions, and this is more of a, a generalized industry question for you, Joe. And he wants to know uh, what economical impact, if any, do you think the recent trend of of states sort of raising that that legal uh, smoking age to 21 is going to have? Do you guys anticipate that uh, pressuring at all in the in the coming months, maybe in the coming years? I really don't don't see it as 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 much of an issue for us. For maybe some of the other parts of the the tobacco industry would have more of an impact, but as we tend to have a slightly older demographic, I think in cigars, you have some younger folks coming in, but they tend to pick it pick it up more lately after they're 21 years old. Uh, most of the college uh, college cigar clubs are all older. <laughs> That's true, and, and you think about it. I mean, I didn't smoke cigars when I was 18. Uh, I, I may have smoked one or two, but uh, I wasn't really a cigar smoker. And you think about a lot of the stuff that the, the younger guys are smoking. Maybe that's the infused things or things like that. Mm -hmm. 
So with with something as specific as your particular brand, I, I don't see it being an issue. Um, but I can see it being an issue for some companies for sure. Uh, you know, the, the companies that make that stuff that you can, you know, the cigars you can get uh, more readily, like at uh, at a Seven Eleven or something. They've got the small little humidor in there with a macanudo and whatever else is in there. Exactly. Uh, those are the ones that that I can see that being an issue with. Um, this is a good question, though. I, I've, I've noticed that uh, popping up a lot. Uh, I'm surprised California hasn't done that. You, they're usually the first ones to to say, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't jumped on that bandwagon yet. All right, John, we got time for what, one more? Yeah, I think one more, and uh, I, I think I'm going to ask this one from Jose because it's an interesting question that's um, sort of different from some of the questions we've been asking. Uh, he wants to know, did you guys have to s seek out special permissions from whiskey companies uh, to elect to use them as pairing suggestions? Because I know, you know there's been a lot of comments about how a lot of people like the chart you've set up, but uh, you know, did, did that require special permission on your part to uh, to get that? No, because actually we're, we're not promoting the whiskey at all, just using a canned image for reference. I'm sure they probably didn't mind the extra uh, yeah. <laughs> the extra advertising, but no, I mean, sometimes you can, people can get picky about that kind of thing, sure, but uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, as long as you're not, you're not linking back to their website, you're not saying, hey, you should buy this, you're just saying, these are, you know, some parameters in which that... These are, these are maybe whiskeys that you're familiar with that fall into that particular category. Right, and if you look, each one of the cigars covers a range of different whiskeys. So yeah. that's kind of what we're... Yeah, it's not specific, exactly. Exactly. Um, so let's see, we've got, what, about, I don't know, about One minute. a minute left. So, uh, Joe, let everybody know that's out there listening where they can find you guys online. Uh, in social media, you guys are really active on Instagram and Facebook and things like that. Let everybody know where where they can find you. Dramcigars.com is the is the website that has the most concise information. We are on Instagram, Facebook, all the other things which <laughs> all the younger guys do. So <laughs> um, you saw me having to set this up, <laughs> so you see my technical expertise. <laughs> no, so it's it's Dram D R A M Cigars.com. And that's like you get all the information there. Uh, but definitely follow uh, Dram Cigars. I think it's at Dram Cigars on Instagram, so you can get an idea of what they're doing at these events because it's pretty exciting stuff. I mean, these are events. Uh, there haven't been any in my area. Uh, everybody's always coming to California last, and I totally understand that. But uh, the, some of the events, they look like they're a lot of fun. So the, if you find one that's in your area, um, and I imagine you can get that information on upcoming events from Facebook as well. So um, that's definitely something you guys want to track down. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in to another Cigar Chat. Thank you, everyone out there in the armed forces who's listening and everything you do to keep us safe uh, so we can sit here and wax on about cigars. Really do appreciate that. Um, you can find us at CigarFederation.com. We'll be back next week. Uh, who do we have next week? I think we have Moya Ruiz next week. On Moya yeah, Ruiz. Next Don't forget... Don't forget, you guys are doing a uh, fantastic pipe dummies on Captain Black on Wednesday as well at 8, yeah. 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard. Yeah, you'll find uh, all, the, all the different shows. Just go to CigarFederation.com. You can find us there. Uh, Joe, really do appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us and answer some of our questions. Uh, really excited about this product. Um, I'm excited about you know the things that you've alluded to in the future, some, some uh, limited editions, some true limited editions. That's exciting. Um, maybe some things getting out of the, the whiskey range and, and you know, pairing with some other things. So really do appreciate you taking the time to hang with us, man. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy talking to you guys, and I really enjoy having the audience questions back. I love to interact with folks. Yeah, well, it was great. We had a good time. Everybody, thanks again for listening. Uh, have a great weekend. Everybody stay safe. All right, and we're back. Uh, and Logan. we're fucking back, as Logan likes to say. <laughs> oh, you, you jumped in. You filled the role. I appreciate that. Filled the role. Uh, so we uh, we finished our Armed Forces Radio segment, uh, Joe, but we are still we're still live and still going out on our podcast listeners. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick some winners now because you guys were uh, very generous in giving us some. We've got a bunch of Dram number threes to give away, uh, which I think is perfect for our uh, our audience. Um, it's the of the three cigars that I've smoked, it's definitely the strongest. Um, it's got you know the most flavor. It's got some spice to it. Um, it hits that modern palate, which is the you know, term that I like to use. 
Uh, it's not doesn't necessarily hit my palate exactly because uh, I think my palate's a little bit old school. But uh, that modern palate where you want a little bit more kick um, and the pairings. Uh, it's funny. My palate for scotch and whiskey and bourbon is different than my palate for cigars. I've noticed because I was trying to find something in that number two range, and most of my uh, most of my bar really fits the number three and the number four. So it's kind of funny how that happens. But um, so yeah, we've got some number threes. We're gonna pick what six winners tonight, John? Six winners. Yeah, and so we're gonna, gonna have uh, four podcast winners as well. Yeah, so if you're listening on the podcast, we're going to do something special that you guys have to pay attention to, and you've already, if you're listening on the podcast, you've already heard it, so um, you'll email me. Well, actually, John, you tell everybody what they have to do, because I'll screw that. So uh, for our podcast listeners, and we know you guys are out there around the world, uh, love that you guys are uh, all over the world. Hopefully, this is limited to the United States, because shipping is expensive, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so listen for the uh, phrase that pays. And you're going to email that phrase that pays to nice. rob at cigarfederation.com with your address and all your particulars, so your telephone number, email address, and shipping address with the phrase that pays to rob at cigarfederation.com. That's for our podcast listeners. Why don't we uh, go ahead and pick our six lucky winners of the uh, Drum Cask number three five packs. So let's see. How do you want to do this? Like I, I've, We've had some good questions. Now, of the questions, have, you, you pulled some questions from the audience. Who did you pull from that, the questions that you really enjoyed? So uh, I picked uh, Explosive Donut. That was a really on-point question. Bob, Dog, and Jose might have been a little overlap. Those are the uh, three that I pulled on. Perfect. And now, I think you uh, now pulled, uh, uh, Explosive Donut. So so those three are winners, right? Did you pick those guys as winners? I picked those guys as winners. Yeah, what the hell? They You guys all just won, so you make sure you email robinscarfederation.com with all Make sure to get your address in there because if, if Rob has to chase you, he's not going to be pretty happy about that, so make sure to no. send your address to him. No, no, it's not that he won't be happy about it. He won't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, hey. so there's that. I think you guys all know me well enough that, no, I won't. If you don't email me, then that's just too bad. And if you email me with the wrong info, I don't know. We'll see. Um, and uh, Explosive Donut, I follow him on Instagram, and I always give him a hard time. He's got to take a selfie with one of these, because he hasn't done any selfies lately. He's big on the I just had it was leg day selfies, so he's got to he's got to drop a selfie in there. You know what? Um, I think we should we should add that Rob that uh, the winners tonight. I think everybody's uh, got to do a selfie. You got to do a selfie. We want to see you guys posting on Instagram and tagging Dram Cigars uh, uh, with when you get your sampler and you're smoking and enjoying with your beverage of choice. We'd love to see you guys post that on Instagram and tag Dram Cigars and Cigar Federation. Absolutely, and if you don't, we'll find you. Um, so I'm trying to go back. The unfortunate thing about this. Uh, about this uh, Q&A app is once I ask the question, it's gone. And I didn't really take a note of who asked the questions. So there's that. Uh, I think Jason Myers is definitely one. I know, but I don't want to pick him. I pick him every week. But he always asks good questions. Yeah, he, he asked, he's, he asked he a bunch good of good questions. questions. The guy works for it. So we'll, we'll pick, uh, okay, Jason Myers, fine, you win again. And then um, uh, we're going to pick these last two randomly. So if you're, you still have to be, oh, you know who I'm going to pick? He didn't ask a question, but I'm going to pick him because I know he is a big, uh, he's a big bourbon guy. We're going to pick Steve, uh, Steve W. Boom. Steve, I know you're listening because uh, I can see you there in the chat room. Steve, you won. Steve, and, uh, Steve loves bourbon and rye, man. Love he it. does. He, he's, he's the one who introduced me to, uh, to the um, Stranahan's. He's, he's a Colorado guy, so he has access to it. I don't have access. I have to order it online. It gets expensive, and then there's like, shipping and stuff. So he was nice enough to uh, to pick up a bottle and ship it out to me. So um, kind of a payback. So Steve, uh, Steve's a winner. And I know I asked some other questions. I'm going to scroll through. You know who I, I – we, we asked some questions from Harley Holmes. So the other Steve. Steve, you're also a winner. I think that's six. So – That's six. So it was what? It was, it was Steve and Steve and Bob Dog and Jason and Jose – and Jose, an explosive donut. An explosive donut. Okay, there we go. Those are our six winners. And, and Bob Dog. And we're going to pick four so podcast So make sure to email winners. Rob at Cigar Fed And four podcast winners. So podcast winners, make sure to email, again, Rob at CigarFederation.com. Make sure to email the phrase that pays either, either in the uh, subject line or in the body of the text. If you don't have the phrase that pays in your address, it is going to suck to be you because we're yeah, just going to smoke those cigars and <laughs> laugh all the way to the bank. Don't even bother emailing me <laughs> the phrase. And I don't even know what the phrase is. Because the phrase doesn't exist yet. Yeah, he doesn't even know. So it yeah. doesn't even exist. So if you're watching, because we would get people who would watch the show 
And then like like 20 minutes later, they would say, oh, I listened on the podcast. No, you didn't. You cheated. Weasels. Weasels. You know, always weaseling. Always weaseling. No, we appreciate all our listeners. We give you guys a hard time, but, you know, we love you. Um, all right, Joe, I told you we'd have you here for a little bit over an hour. That's kind of where we are. Any last parting words of wisdom? <laughs> no, I just want everybody to – I want to say thank you to everybody, you two guys especially, and to everybody out there. Try a dram. Look at the chart. And I think everybody would be really pleasantly surprised. And use the DRAM as a vehicle to expand your pairings. You brought up the coffee. Coffee came up as a question. The DRAM is a guideline. You can pair it with other things other than whiskeys. So try them. See what you like and let us know. We really need to know. Let us know what you think of. You can re do our Instagram or Facebook, however you want, however you're comfortable doing it. You can email it into us on the website. We'd appreciate it. Now I do have a question. Is um, on the website? I don't think there there is a link or anything on the website. Is there a place where people can find uh, you know, a list of retailers? Maybe there's somebody that's local to them that has it, but they might not know that they have it. Is there a we way to make? We haven't put the list of retailers up at this point yet. Because of our our issue, we, we stopped opening up new stores after a certain point just so we could service the ones that we we did have on, on site. And in reverence to the folks that really wanted the product, asked for it, maybe even have ordered it and not gotten it, we don't wanna we don't wanna do that till the point we have everybody that really that's wanted it and has it in, in their store at that okay. point. So maybe that's something in the future we'll, we'll see yeah. more of a, a comprehensive list of where you can find it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's probably some guys, some retailers who uh, you know have their local shop. Maybe they sell it online. That you guys can find it as well. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't looked. Uh, but uh, maybe there's a way. I heard there's a website called Google. They give you all kinds of information. Out there. It's a great website. Um, so you can check there. Um, really do appreciate it again, Joe. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Look forward to seeing you in, uh, in New Orleans. And we will... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna find you guys this time. I still don't know how we missed you. Uh, give just just given the fact that it's cigars and whiskey, I don't know. I <laughs> I'm I'm embarrassed actually that, that happened. We will we'll have our flasks ready. I guarantee it. Say that again. Not to make you guys feel bad, but as you walked into our booth, which was 16 booths, the top billing on the booth had the big dram cigars for whiskey post uh, six by six feet wide by I think eight feet long oh man no oh, so so it was really subtle and uh, somehow we missed it I yeah guess. we <laughs> <laughs> well you know for anybody who's been to IPCPR or seen footage uh, if you've seen footage it doesn't do it justice it is and I've never been to the one to, to the setup in New Orleans so I'm curious to see how that is but the setup in Vegas is overwhelming to say the least and there's just so much going on because it's not just cigars. There's there's pipes, there's vape, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. So it is it is kind of hard. I'm not making up excuses. I'm just saying it can be overwhelming. So, um, but we will definitely find you guys this year, and we'll uh, we'll um, we're going to sample that number four definitely. I'm looking forward to that. So, uh, Joe, again, I really do appreciate. It. I had a lot of fun chatting with you, and we'll catch up with you in uh, New Orleans. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure on my side. All right. Everybody, I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. We'll be back next week with Moya Ruiz. They've got some new releases. Uh, the Rake is uh, one of their new releases. I think that's uh, – I don't know if that's limited. I don't think that's limited. Uh, I'll have a review of that coming up next week. And then they just came out with the uh, – what's the one we talked about with the, the Chinese finger trap? And that's, finger trap, I think, yeah. I think that's a, a Cigar Dojo release, which I think is really cool that they do stuff like that. So And the packaging looks really fun, so – um, definitely going to talk about some of those next week. And those guys always give Logan a hard time, so that makes me feel better about myself because Logan's always <laughs> picking on me. So, um, Assuming Logan's back next week. If not, it'll be John and they'll be picking on me, so who knows. Uh, but it, that's always a fun show. So we'll see you guys next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Um, you know, Enjoy some good cigars and share them on CigarFederation.com. And you've downloaded the app. Out there. If you haven't downloaded the app, shame on you. Uh, iPhone... Android, you can see everywhere. Just go to your uh, app store and look for uh, Cigar Federation. Download the app and uh, you know start sharing your photos and uh, and your thoughts on whatever it is you're smoking. Everybody have a good weekend, and uh, we'll be back with you next week. <laughs>